At this time, all of our children and our um, children ministers may be excused. Praise God. Let's give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at all the kids. Amen. Kids, go to your classes because Pastor Joey's boring up here. You want to go to your classes and have fun. Look, many more got up. I don't know whether to be offended or blessed by that. Um, also, um, we, we have um, nursery open. Praise God. So if you have itty-bitty ones, please take advantage of our nursery. Um, you know, put them to work. <laughs> I don't know what else. <laughs> Amen. But no, we just want you to know that that's available for you as well. Praise God. Amen. Um, we're we're going to jump right into this because we have a lot to go through as we always do in what Holy Spirit has prepared for us. Um, I encourage you today, will you make this a brand new day? Amen. A brand new life. Right? Enough with the old, right? Now, listen, I know Father God can do anything. Amen. Some of y'all believe in to lose some weight. You may lose the weight here in service. Some of y'all maybe want to look prettier and all that stuff. Listen, you're beautiful. You're a masterpiece. Amen. But see, the, the, the reason why God wants to open up this way is because Father says there's heaviness in the room, but it's self-inflicting heaviness. It's self-inflicting heaviness that when we look at each other or we do comparisons with what this person has and what I don't have, it's the enemy trying to weigh us down. But we serve a mighty God, a God whose love is everlasting from everlasting, a love that's undescribable, but we're going to try today in this worship service, Elder Howard. But I encourage you, will you make the choice to make today, this moment, that Father, I choose to die with you right now. Amen. Amen. I choose to die with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I pray so because I, I'll tell you what, I don't want nothing to do with this world. Amen. Amen. I love it when you look at, you know, beloved brothers and sisters and you meet eyes. You can tell some of them's like, don't you come over here. <laughs> right? <laughs> And of course, you know, I find it funny, but then I know pastor, you know, knows this. I find it funny because I'm like, okay, I'm not. Then Holy Spirit says, go over there. So of course, now I stand here, amen. <laughs> um, but I, I believe and declare in the name above every name. Listen, beloved family, I don't mean to offend you when I say this because I'm personally throwing myself under the bus. It has nothing to do with my capabilities. It has nothing to do with how much of this good book that I memorize. It has nothing to do with all the good things that I'm doing. It has nothing to do with all the good friends that I have and good family. It has nothing to do, it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everything. Say it with me, everything. Amen. And so I throw myself under the bus because I don't mean to offend or hurt anybody here, okay? If I can learn to make it all about Lord Jesus... Then the glory of God is, Father God says, you are mine and because you make me number one in your life, everything, say with me, everything, everything. that's more than everything now, everything in your life, Father God says, I will be in charge of. Amen. And I, listen, I know, I'm going to say it, I know for you, just like with me, I want God in charge of my entire family, hallelujah, I want God in charge of my church family. I want God in charge of your children. I want God in charge of healing and restoration and protection over our police department, over our medical field, over everyone. Right? I want God in charge. Hallelujah. I don't want nothing to do with man. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to open up in this. Praise God. And then we're going to open up in prayer after I read this. You saw throughout the service, in between each song, forsake. It means abandon. Someone or something he would never forsake her. That's the example. Similar words are dessert, not, not cheesecake. <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to abandon, right? Dessert. Well, I say that because when I, when I typed it, I'm like, oh, cheesecake sounds good, right? The Holy Spirit said, I'm not talking about cheesecake. Get your mind right. Leave, quit, depart from, leave behind, leave high and dry, turn one's back on, cast aside, give up, reject. Disown, break up, break up with, leave stranded, etc. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. Thank you you didn't leave us where we were at. 
Thank you, Father God, that no matter how many times we hurt you in disobedience and we wanted to, like, just party and we thought we were having fun and the whole time we was running, running away from you, Lord Jesus, and when something bad would happen in my life, I would blame you, God, and then I would say I didn't believe in you, but I would blame you. I thank you that you didn't abandon me. I thank you you didn't leave me in hell. And I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that because of you, you left heaven to show this world how much of a father's love is in heaven. And it's all for us right now. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit, I know the only way we can bless you, Holy Spirit, to allow your presence within every believer of Lord Jesus Christ to flow what we say overflow miraculously is to lift up the name of our Lord Jesus. So, Holy Spirit, as we do this, teach us, Holy Spirit. Speak to us, Father God, through thy word, Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power of your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Father God, that you manifest it in all of your beloved children, that your grace abounds in every household, in every soul, Heavenly Father, that scales would fall off their eyes and that they would see themselves in your identity, Father God, that I have a Father, a God who loves me, that my identity is not in my wealth, my identity is not in my last name, my identity is not in my career, my identity is not what I do, my identity is not in my skin color. Color. My identity is not in my education. My identity is in you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we all say all together, amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. How many of you believe that, that your identity is truly in him? Listen, I'm sold out. You know when you're sold out in Christ is when people's opinions don't matter. When people, right? Can I get an amen? You know when you know your identity is solid in Holy Spirit? When you have groups that form, that want to grumble and complain, that want to start riots, that want to talk bad about, they don't move you. And the beauty is, in your anointing, say with me, my anointing? My anointing. In my anointing through Christ my Lord, God in me says, pray for them, don't judge them. Amen. Because the devil deceived them. Right? Say it with me, forsake. forsake. The message is titled, God Forsaken Message. Brace yourself, religious people. That's not using God's name in vain. It's a description. Okay? This message is titled, God Forsaken Message. And this is a hard one. Honestly, I prayed about it and I was hoping one of the other pastors will take care of it. But Holy Spirit said, nope. You sat under them for a couple weeks. Amen. Right, Sister Ashley? Put on your big boy britches. Right? And let's get to it. Amen. How many of you are ready to grow in the Lord? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's just do it. Amen. So we're going to start off in Deuteronomy 31.6. We're going to spend a lot of time in the book of Corinthians, second book of Corinthians, in chapter 5. We're going to spend a lot of time there. The reason why, I need you to understand this real quick. The church of Corinth... It was a problematic church at that time. And the Apostle Paul was coming against, it was a cosmopolitan type of city. A hustling, bustling city. A lot of people like to compare, it's cute that some of you guys like that. <laughs> I love seeing you smile, right? It's good to laugh in God's house, right? But I mean, it's just hustle, bustle. And I mean, I, many people compare that place like Vegas. Mm. They actually had temples there set up for prostitution. Yeah, we're talking about the, this place. And here's the Apostle Paul coming, bringing the good news. Now, some of these people already know, but guess what? They backslid and back into the world. Right? Oh, I, I know Jesus, and I know I'm supposed to live holy because he's God Almighty. But I remember when I could serve this God... And I could satisfy all the pleasures of my, of my lust, of myself, of everything. and do. But yet, I'll, I'll claim I have Jesus too, but I want to do all this stuff too. May I tell you right now, look at the world we live in. Can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah? Look at the world we live in. May I tell you, you're a rare Pokemon. You are extremely rare. And praise God, God caught you. Hallelujah. 
Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are extremely rare and valuable. And I'm going to explain why here in a minute. So we're going to be in that book for a while because God has a lot to teach in that. And then we're going to go into the words of Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to close in Hebrews 10, 25. Amen. Be strong and courageous. Hallelujah. Be strong and courageous. Let me see your muscles. Be strong. Right? Be strong and courageous. How come you have to show me your muscles? Be strong. Yeah, be strong. You know, man, okay. All right. <laughs> what you going to do? What you going to do when Hulkamania runs wild on you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. Say it with me, them. When the Bible says them, that means there's an us. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. May I talk about the us? Us, us, we are covered by his blood. May I say it together? Us, we are unified in his love. Amen. Say it with me. Us, God is on our side. Let, let me say, can I say it? Us, angels are all around us fighting and protecting us. Amen. Let me say again, us, we are God's beloved. Amen. One more time, one more time. Say it again, us, COVID has nothing to do with you. Amen. Nothing. In Jesus' name, nothing. Hallelujah. The Lord your God who goes with you, he will never leave you nor forsake you. I love this. God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, right? I'll never abandon you. Like what we read earlier, I'll never break up with you, right? You see, there's some of us sitting here t this morning that we're treating God like dirt. I thank God that you're here, but we unintentionally or maybe some of us intentionally put God aside because our problems are too heavy. Father is saying, Will you stop treating me like dirt? Will you make me number one in your life? See, some of us are married to our problems and situations. Some of us are married, even though you're on your second marriage, third marriage, fourth marriage. Listen, just give God a hallelujah that you're not in those marriages anymore. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Stop talking about the exes. There, there's an ex there for a reason. Right? I mean, my goodness. Some of y'all watch American Idol. I ain't got cable TV. I'm not allowed to have it. But I'm going to tell you right now. Not because Trish said I can't. God said so. Stop looking at Trish. <laughs> right? But some of you watch American Idol. If they don't like what's going on on stage, what do they do? The late. Golly, guys. I'm over here preaching until my, my bun comes off. All right? Yeah, right? X. Right? You can cancel that. Amen? I love it that Father God says, no matter what you do to me, I'll never ant you. <laughs> I'll preach all day long, amen. That even though, even though you say you love me, and then later on today you do something wrong, God is such a loving Father where all he's doing is saying, come here, son. Come here, daughter. Let me get that off of you. But once again, throwing myself under the bus, it's in our fallen nature to immediately be ashamed. And then what do we do? And what, what God wants to show us is in that very moment, that split second moment, the devil wants us to become gods in our own life. You see, it's no longer about you getting healed. It's no longer about you getting set free from addiction. It's no longer about you living abundantly. If you have Jesus Christ already, it's already done. Can I get a hallelujah? It's, you're already recovered. You're already healed. You're already rich. You already victorious. You already risen. 
you already property of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You're already. It's done did. Right? You know, it's funny because I never went swimming and go, I want to get more wet. <laughs> okay, add more water. I need to get more wet. Sometimes we need to preach this way so the Holy Spirit can say, you're covered by my blood. How much more covered do you need? This has become such a fanatic topic and it's become such a distraction of the devil when I hear beloved children of God saying, oh, well, pastor, I backslid. I need to rededicate my life. Don't get me wrong. Do it. But I tell them, what are you rededicating for? It's already did. You just need to repent and get rid of this mindset. Stop focusing on the addiction and focus on I am recovered. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father. Say it with me. Father. Father. Holy Spirit. Holy Son. I did not ask Sister Tish to, to sing that song. We believe in the Father. Right? I love that song. I love that song. And I love this. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So this sets us up to this perfect love. This sets us up to the perfect love, like I said, that we're going to talk about here in the book of Corinthians and how the Apostle Paul was trying to minister to a group of people who are just rebellious. Remember, right? That's all they wanted to do. Huh? Let's party, right? And, of course, here comes the Apostle, and everybody knows of his coming. Everybody knows of Holy Spirit's anointing. And the ones who truly want God and repent, guess what? They were all ears to hear. But you have to understand, there's very few of us. There is more of them in the natural. However, when you worship God Almighty, like Pastor Tish said earlier, it's hard to, to, the devil is an author of confusion. So the devil will have you start looking at family and friends, at your pastor, at your leadership and go, well, what are they doing? Why aren't they doing that? How come they're not doing this? How come they're wearing a mask? How come he's not wearing a mask? How come he got the shot? How come? You're going to go crazy. You're going to go cray cray. I rebuke cray cray. I'm allergic to stupid. I am. I'm allergic to it. If you bring stupid around me, I get itchy. Seriously. Seriously. And praise God, Holy Spirit. Remember, I don't judge. God shows me the fruit. If it's stupid fruit. Right? If it's stupid fruit, then I pray for wisdom. Amen? I don't judge and be like, man, you're stupid. I don't do that, family. Right? How many times can you say stupid? But amen? Say it with me. I refuse to be stupid. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. So let's move on. I love this picture. You see the daddy raising their son, right? May I ask you how much love is in that? Who? Right? He will never leave you nor forsake you. Let's get into this. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. Pause. Lord Jesus Christ died for us, which means it's finished. This means God does not pick nationality. God doesn't pick color. God doesn't pick the wealthy over the poor. God picked everyone in this world. Whoever wants me, have me. Amen. God, God is God. Amen. Do you want God today? Hallelujah. Do you want Holy Spirit to flow through your life, through your family like never before? Amen. I want to live a life that God defines who I am. I don't want to live a life where I'm controlled by what man says that I am. Listen, I lived a life like that for far too long serving this world. Right? In my hurt, in my anger, in my depression, in my addictions. That's what it was. It would control my identity and I had to keep proving to people, to demons. Hey, Joey, you, hey, Joey, you're not crazy enough to go do that. What? The devil. Come on, Sister Cherry, give me a high five. Freeze frame. You didn't freeze frame it. One more time. <laughs> right? 
Don't get crunchy because re -freeze I'll freeze frame with you. Stay after service. <laughs> all right? Some of y'all are like, how come I didn't get a freeze frame? Just stay after service. We'll freeze frame all day long. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's have fun. Amen? That those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen? Are you living for Lord Jesus Christ? Amen? amen? Now be careful. You say amen. What about that person that cut you off? What about that rude customer? What about that Christian that did you wrong? Huh? Is Holy Spirit in us and living abundantly? Because if he is, guess what? It hurts. But immediately the thoughts that God bless you with is, I hurt on that cross for you. You need to forgive them and let them go. Amen? Amen. Amen. Therefore, Therefore, from now on we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Listen to what the Apostle Paul is saying. Apostle Paul is saying, I, I remember. Many people don't remember when he was Saul of Tarsus, he was running around prosecuting, killing Christians. Oh yeah, he's seen Jesus. He know who Jesus is. Right? And I love his story because of the fact that he was persecuting us. Killing us. Killing our family member. Because Saul of Tarsus was them. But now here's Saul. Born again. Born again. Say with me. Born again. Through Lord Jesus Christ. He had that encounter with God and he said, Lord. And now here he is saying, I know Jesus when he was in the flesh. Yet now, I don't know him any longer. This is very important for us to grasp with everything that we have. Because many people will tell you who Jesus is. If I'm your pastor, if I'm truly your pastor, you receive from me because you know Holy Spirit speaking through me. I'm not a fool. There's some of you in here that I'm not your pastor. I'm going to speak over your life. Get a pastor. Amen. Amen. Listen, Pastor John, stand up. There's Pastor John right there. Amen. Give him a, give, give him a round of applause. Amen. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we're one. We're held accountable as pastors. As pastoring this church, God's holy church. Amen. Amen. But I ask pastor to stand up because I ask you, listen. You may look at my life and you may not want to connect with me. Maybe there's something going on. I'm letting you know we have another pastor that I personally answer to. And I'll tell you right now, he's just a few years older than me. But guess what? He is a godly man that's been married longer than I have. He's a godly man that raised awesome children. That is, that is a true godly daddy. He has many, many grandchildren. So I'm going to tell you this. Don't just come here and go, well, that church got nothing for me. Listen, Holy Spirit wants to love on you and bless you. And I promise you, if you're struggling with family things, maybe there's things I can't help you with. I pray that you know I will ask my pastor. I will ask my elders. I will ask my deacons for help. And as one body in Christ, we are here to not only Love one another and yes, worship together and praise God together. But we are here to hurt with one another too. Amen. You don't have to be alone in your hurt. Listen, there's not one of us here that got it together. So guess what? If you're sitting here and you're pointing it out, you don't get a cookie. Because ain't nobody perfect. Amen? Amen. And one more thing. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Said I could say it. If you come to church and all you do is look at, well, look at those clicks over there. Look at that group of friends over there. Look at this problem over here. I'm going to tell you right now, they ain't the problem, you are. Amen. They ain't the problem, you are. And I know that cut deep. But guess what? Be a big boy, be a big girl and take it to the altar. Take it up with God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Because guess what? In God's holy house, there's no division. Which means if you have your own agenda and not God's agenda, I hate to say it. But the anointing of Holy Spirit, 
you're going to get convicted. And he's God Almighty, and I'll tell you right now, I fear God. I mean, right now, I tell you that, I'm shaking. I fear God. Even as a pastor, I fear God. Because listen, family, I pray you hear my heart. That one day, that sky is going to open. You're going to hear that trumpet. And I don't know about you, but even though I'm a pastor, I, I'm fearful. I want to make sure every day that I am living right. Amen? I want to make sure every day that I am being the husband God has called me to for his favorite daughter. Oh, y'all got crunchy. You could be favorites too. Amen? Listen, I got to speak that over my house. Can I get an amen? Husbands, you got to speak that over your house. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. He or she is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Hallelujah. Behold, behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Oh, it gets gooder and gooder. Listen, listen to this. That is that God was in Christ. How many of you know that? Isn't he amazing? Isn't our God amazing? I had a question um, two days ago. I, and this is a deep question. So well, Pastor, you talk about Jesus, you talk about Holy Spirit, where is God? And I said, well, explain, because I understand your question. I'm not trying to be difficult. But you said, I talk about Jesus and I talk about Holy Spirit. And you ask, where is God? I want to know, what are, you, what are you talking about? Well, what I'm trying to figure out is, if God is in heaven and he sends Jesus, and then Jesus is now on earth, and you talk about Jesus, and that Jesus died for our sins, and everything else, then where is God? I said, you're talking about one person. The three is in one. Can I get an amen? And I love this because, you know, just, sometimes you just got to ask the person questions. And Holy Spirit will answer it without you giving an answer. Because when we did this, we both did it, and they're like, right? Hallelujah, right? And then, of course, I get to be goofy and say, well, you know, it's just kind of like if you took my soul out of my body, I just bloop. Right? You can't divide me up. Amen? But we're going to get deeper into that. Not imputing their trespasses. God didn't tell you. Look at you. You're too. When you received Jesus, did God say, oh, you can't come to me because you did this in the past? And this is what I love. Here it says, not imputing their trespasses to them as committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then... Say it with me, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Hallelujah, say it with me, I am an ambassador for God. This means that in you, in you, just your very presence shows this world the ministry of reconciliation. This ministry of reconciliation goes far beyond what we can explain or understand, but it's just your very presence. Being in every situation that you have the ability to say, I was once lost, but because of Lord Jesus Christ, I am now reconciled to the Father. I have peace with God. Amen. And that's eternal peace with God. It's not through, it's not through any man, priest, or religion, or a pastor, or any kind of, it's through Lord Jesus Christ. His blood that has made you, hallelujah, say it with me, co-heirs with Christ Jesus. Amen. As an ambassador, though we were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And this is the word that God give us in how we minister the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. How are you guys ministering the gospel? Is the ministry that you carry of reconciliation to point out everybody's flaws, to, to, to judge them? Or is your ministry of reconciliation... Just to be there and show God's light and to love on somebody. Listen, it doesn't matter what they're addicted to, all the things they've done wrong, how wrong they're living. Guess what? Not only do they know that already, can I get an amen? amen? But God Almighty knows what they're doing. So as a Christian, if you're just there just to be Captain Obvious, you want to live life as Captain Obvious, and point out everybody's flaws and wrongs, 
My, my question is, how are you carrying out the ministry of reconciliation that God purchased through the perfect one, Lord Jesus Christ, for his spirit to live in you so that you could be the shining light of agape to show people the love of God? Amen? So how do we, how do we activate this ministry of reconciliation? Well, the word just said it and we read through it. It's by the words that we speak. Amen? Do we speak the words of life and of breakthrough? Do we speak the words of blessing? Amen? I'm going to tell you, it took years. And I'm not trying to discourage you because God can do it quickly, but I was stubborn, prideful. It took years in my house for God to completely crucify this tongue. Ugh. All, all I did was speak trash and garbage. It took years. But I'm so thankful in his mercy that he didn't give up. And I'm thankful that it's crucified. This flesh is crucified. And now you're looking at a member of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I just like sticking my tongue out at you. Right? My question is that, is that where you're at? Because remember, all the demons have ears. The glory of God is all the angels have ears. But here's my question. If what you spew is negativity, death, destruction, gossip, complaining, me, me, it's all about me. Look how I feel. What's going on with this? Look at this situation. I can't believe she's wearing that. I can't believe. Oh. Darkness is attracted to that. And the glory of God is, I, I, I keep scanning the room because Holy Spirit tells me to. The beauty is, is that I could just see souls just getting brighter and brighter. See, right now between you and the Lord, you're saying, oh, Father, forgive me. I don't want to do that no more. Amen. And you keep that up as, we, as, as, we're, as we're closing out. You keep that up. But I pray that you take this to the altar. Now let me, let, let me make sure that you know this. Father God already knows all he's asking is will you be obedient. It doesn't matter as far as your prayer or what you got to say or what people think. Be obedient to God. It hurts my heart when I hear from family members that say, oh, I should have done this that Sunday. God was tugging on my heart. Listen, I'm not going to tell you what's well, okay. I don't say that. It's not okay to be disobedient with God. So don't expect that from me. But what I will tell you is, do you want to go to the altar now? Well, I'll go Wednesday. May I tell you this? Ten out of ten times, they're not here on that Wednesday. I'm asking, will you be obedient to the Lord and take that to the altar? Amen? Maybe there's a spirit of confusion over you. Right? Maybe the enemy is trying to put a spirit of confusion over you. Maybe you just want to be a, the warrior that you are and you just want to put all the walls up around your household. Because you know that the devil has been trying to get in your house. It's time. Say it with me. It's time. Wow. Hallelujah. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. How many of you know this, that all the sins that you have done in your life, maybe that you are doing right now, how many of you know this, that this perfect man, his name is Lord Jesus Christ, he came to take your every sin. And I know that I'm surrounded by my brothers and sisters. We're eternal now. My goodness, we're going to have such an awesome neighborhood in heaven. Amen? I'm so excited. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so excited. Praise God. Listen, I pray you join with me. Ask Lord Jesus Christ for the biggest mansion. Why? Because he's building it. Listen, you can't go to heaven and be crunchy and knock on my door. Why, your house so big. For one, there's no crunchiness in heaven. But you know I'm going to tell you because I thank God for it. Amen. How you get a swimming pool? I thank God for it. How you get all the creatures in heaven? Because Trish praying for it. <laughs> Y'all know. Every morning I can see her just going up to every animal. Mwah. 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 I got a giraffe here. Honey. Right, I got a giraffe. 
How many, show of hands, how many of you know that Lord Jesus Christ died for your sin? Amen. I pray that you know this. There's some of you in here today that you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord. There's some of you that right now you're probably getting bored of this message. Well, guess what? There's nothing boring about hell. Because if you don't know Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to hell. And then when you go to hell, you're not just going to be there being tortured by yourself. You're going to be with all the other demons that didn't want anything to do with Lord Jesus Christ. Didn't want nothing to do with Holy Spirit. Oh, it gets worser and worser. But as you're tortured in hell for eternity, you have on a high definition screen, you see your loved ones in heaven. And you see them living life in perfection and you're crying out to them, Mom, Dad, help me. I'm dying down here. And I'm telling you this because I love you. Get right with God. Can I get an amen? Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My question to you is, does God lie? Does God have anything to do with sin? Is there any sin in God? So the question is, is there any perversion in God? Is there any cussing in God? Is there any gossip in God? Is there anything like that in our Father? But see, here Lord Jesus Christ took that. And for the first time, he yelled to God and said, why? We said together, hear me family. We said together, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We said together that we would never leave. We will never forsake him. And here is Lord Jesus with all of my sin. With all of my Garbage. And he cries out to God and says, why have you forsaken me? Why did you leave me? I pray if anything today that when we leave here, we can embrace that. That God Almighty had to separate himself. He had to break his heart to win you over. And glory to God because you received him. Oh, your life and life more abundantly has just begun. Can you give God praise? Amen. Your life has just begun. Amen. So when we talk about forsaken, that means you're abandoned. You're deserted. But we know 
It didn't stay that way, amen? Because you know what took place on that third day. Can I get a hallelujah? Amen. Let's give God praise, amen? So here's the question and the message in this God-forsaken message. The Holy Spirit has us to put together and to worship Lord Jesus Christ. Father God is asking this question. Don't even think about forsaking me. Let me explain. God wants to know, am I forsaking Holy Spirit? Let's ask that out loud. Am I forsaking Holy Spirit? The beauty is in God's presence, you're not right now in Jesus' name. You're not. Say with me, I am not. But this is where Father wants to leave us in. When we talk about forsaking, there's all this on the screen. I'm going to go quickly. Forsaking is the act of giving up. Giving up, surrendering. Surrendering a possession. Surrendering a right. Surrendering a title. Forsaking, it really means like this. I don't want it. Forsaking, it means giving up something, abandonment, desertion, the act of rejecting. When you don't want something, what do you normally do when you reject it? Do that with me right now, reject something. I don't want it. I pray that's what you're doing with the devil. Get away from me, Satan. Sickness tries to come in your body, I reject it in Jesus' name. Remember family, beloved children of God. It was, purchased, it was purchased at the greatest price for you to activate the spirit of faith in you through Christ our Lord. Which means when you observe something taking place within your body, if some thought is going on in your mind, God give you the ability to capture that thing and to cut that head off. Can I get an amen? How do you do that? Say it with me. Jesus is Lord. Lord Jesus, this thing is trying to speak to me. I'm starting to worry. But Father, right now I choose to see you on that cross. Father, I choose to look at you on that cross. Lord Jesus, I know you're at the throne. But I choose right now to see what you did to live inside of me. Amen. Sudden abandonment is forsaking. Maybe from a particular party or... Forsaking Lord Jesus Christ, right? And God said he wants to close on this and we're going to get into the scripture right here. Say it with me, not forsaking. If y'all would stand up with me, praise God. We have a couple songs as we always do here in God's holy church. And the reason why we have these songs is for one, it blesses agape. Amen. Say it with me, agape. agape. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And Father, Son, Holy Spirit want to bless you. And the reason why we have these altar songs is for you to be intimate with the Lord and come up. Listen, we're not a church that showboats. We're, I'm not a pastor that wants to show you that I speak in tongues or do this or do that. This is between you and the Lord and nobody. It's in order now. Nobody's going to interrupt you, lay hands on you, none of that. But if you need hands laid on, there will be leadership surrounding the altar. And they will anoint you with oil. And God promises that when an elder prays over you, the manifestation of his healing will occur within the holy temple. Amen. How many of you said that you don't want to ever forsake God? Show of hands. And here Holy Spirit gives us the final message. We've touched on this before, but it's been some time. And Holy Spirit says he wants it now because God is multiplying us. As you can see, to the point where brothers spoke it out. That it's just all for God's glory. Amen. Say it with me, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. We can say it together. The assembling of ourselves. Together. As in a manner of some. But exhorting one another. And so much more. As you see the day approaching. How many of you can see that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back soon? Hallelujah. So right now God is saying, don't forsake me. Don't leave me. Don't abandon me. 
don't reject me. You get planted and rooted in a holy church. You encourage and love one another. Don't backbite. Don't judge one another. Listen, I have nothing to do with that. When I first started at this church, there was all kinds of that. Pastor can back me up with that. And I would tell him, I'm not going to talk about an elder. I'm not going to talk about what happened in the past. You know why? It's in the past. I can't do nothing about it anyway. But the glory of God is he wants to be in our future. Amen, church? Will you allow God to be in our future? If you will, come on up front. Amen? I'm going to ask our leaders and pastors to come up. Join me in a word of prayer. I know some of you are praying about coming to the altar. That's fine. Let's just pray together and the songs are going to kick on here. But let's just pray. Because I know there's some souls in here today that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord. And I'm asking Holy Spirit. If that's you, you've been bold for the world. Oh yeah, you crazy. You wild. You partied, you did this, you did that. Yeah, you did it for the devil. But God right now is asking you, will you be bold for him? See, this decision that you make here at this moment is going to define your entire eternity if you're going to go to heaven or hell. I'm going to ask everybody in the sanctuary, if that's you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Will you be bold and say, that's me, Pastor. I raise my hand and I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. I'm looking around. Praise God. I see that hand. Praise God. So all together, before we get into worship at the altar, we're going to say this prayer together. Amen. Let's pray, let's pray it out loud. Hallelujah. As if this was the first time. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, I ask for your forgiveness. I'm sorry that I hurt you. I make you my Lord and Savior. Father God, forgive me. Holy Spirit, be one in me for all of eternity. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.